Okay, good morning and welcome. Uh, it's good to connect with you through this call. Uh, we're going to study from the book of Hebrews and we will continue. We've uh, done till chapter 8 and today we will pick up at chapter 9. Let's pray and uh, let's get started. I'll, I'll just say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, your uh, amazing work, Lord. Father, we thank you for uh, such wisdom, oh God, uh, that Father is displayed in the way, uh, Father God, uh, you have worked out our redemption, Father. And Lord, uh, we thank you, Lord, for all the truths that we are learning about Jesus and how uh, he's so perfect uh, and Father God um, uh, and uh, uh, Lord, how he is our high priest and he has become our sacrifice, oh God. And Father, we just pray that uh, whatever we learn will help us deepen our relationship with you, Lord, and uh, strengthen our walk with you. Father, we uh, commit this course, we commit every student, uh, even the faculty, Father, and we just ask for your grace, Lord, to uh, honor your word and uh, live by it. We commit all things into your hands, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. In Hebrews uh, chapter 8, we saw the comparison between the old covenant and the new covenant and how uh, Jesus uh, became the co-signer or the mediator of our new covenant. Something new, um, and when we say new, it's new even in terms of its quality uh, that he brought about. And the new covenant has better promises for us. And so those were some things that were uh, shared given to us in chapter 8. Now let's move on to chapter 9. We can read it portion by portion and then uh, I'll begin to explain. Let's see how far we get in today's class. So Hebrews chapter 9 verses 1 to 5. Uh, could someone please unmute and read it? Hebrews chapter 9 verses 1 to 5. Uh, then okay. Okay, well, maybe one person can. Uh, two of you started reading. Rosalind, you can read I, first, and uh, the other person, who was it? I missed. Me and Zeli told you. Zeli, okay. Zeli, uh, could you read the next section? Is that okay? Okay, awesome. Fine. Let's go ahead. Uh, Rosalind, please yeah. carry on. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Then, indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary, and behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Okay, thank you, Rosalind. So uh, he is simply presenting the structure of the tabernacle. The tabernacle is uh, the earthly tabernacle or the tabernacle which was built by Moses, which he is calling as the earthly sanctuary, is a shadow of the real tabernacle in heaven. That's something we have discussed. So in this section, he is just presenting the structure where he talks about the parts of the tabernacle we know you know there's an outer court inner court uh, and then you have the holy of holies uh, and some of the furniture of the tabernacle things like uh, you had a lamp stand there was a table of showbread um, and uh, 
yeah the then you had other things like uh, golden censer ark of the covenant and where each one was placed and the articles within the ark of the covenant things like a golden pot which had manna Aaron's rod that budded and tablets of the covenant these were placed inside the ark of the covenant and then you know on top was the mercy seat the the blood uh, needed to be put on that and uh, then the presence of the lord would come so he's just describing it for us and i think we already uh, know this we have learned about this from the book of exodus exodus chapter 25 to 31 and then again uh, 35 to 40 they describe um, all all of these all of these um, articles as well as the structure of the tabernacle so uh, in essence, there were certain uh, instructions for worship uh, and God gave this so that we can understand what heavenly worship is like. Uh, so, you know, uh, something like when you have, there is um, uh, worship, incense in the earthly tabernacle now we know there are scriptures that talk about our prayer being an incense and going up in the presence of god so there is a significance uh whatever exists in the earthly tabernacle has a spiritual meaning to it has a heavenly um, association so that is how we have to understand and the author is just telling us plainly like okay these these things existed this was the structure of the earthly tabernacle now let's move ahead from there uh, we'll read the next section here uh, hebrews chapter 9 verses 6 to 10 Kizali, uh, kindly pick it up. Now, when these things had been thus prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle perform, performing the services, but into the second part, the high priest went along once a year, nor, not without food, which he offered for himself and for the people sin committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who perform the service perfect in regard to the conscience. Concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings, and fleshly ordinance imposed until the time of reformation okay thank you so much um, so we notice that the priests had many responsibilities so if one was a priest there's hard work there's schedule you have supposed to do so many things in the temple the activities needed to be maintained because uh, up in heaven how how is it constantly there's worship you know constantly um, god is being uh, exalted and glorified and just a picture of that was the earthly tabernacle and we see the duties of uh, priests so priest uh, the hebrew word is kohen and uh, you know priests were appointed we know god chose one of the tribes uh, of israel to have that priestly uh, responsibility and in that responsibility came ministering to god and there was also responsibilities as far as people are concerned so they had they had to minister to the people through various sacrifices and you know various activities that they did so as far as ministering to the lord is concerned in the tabernacle there were daily uh, offerings that were sacrificed uh, incense needed to be burnt in the holy place and uh, there was the lampstand right so the wicks of the lampstand they had to make sure that it is tended so that the lamp continues to burn 
properly then they had to make sure there was always bread on the table of uh, show bread uh, and uh, god had instructed there are a lot of instructions we are not going into the details of it uh, the bread of the presence it was called and so it would be laid there but at the end of every uh, on a weekly basis the bread had to be renewed so the priests had to ensure that that work is done and uh, also there were instructions about you know uh, what they could consume what they couldn't consume what they have to wear how they have to approach uh, so they had to first make sacrifices for themselves so that they are acceptable in god's presence and they would go in in order to uh, perform all these different duties which they had now as far as the people are concerned there were other responsibilities remember that's what the the responsibility of a priest is one is towards god one is towards people so towards people what is it that they would uh, do uh, they would attend to various sacrifices okay there were a lot of animal sacrifices and uh, sacrifices of other grains that was offered unto god and uh, you know there there was a manner in which the blood had to be shed and a portion of that blood needed to be offered on the altar so they had to do all this methodically and properly so uh, in the sacrifices if you go back and study there are all kinds of sacrifices there are uh, like burnt offerings uh, sorry morning and evening sacrifice uh, there were uh, sacrifices such as passover and there was a special uh, time known as the day of atonement which came once in a year where only the high priest was allowed to go into the holiest uh, holy of holies so for that also there's a particular uh, manner of sacrificing so uh, the priests were engaged in sacrifices they also uh, made offerings to god uh, so people would come and uh, depending on their situation uh, for for you know some sort of uh, thanksgiving or um, repentance before god they would make uh, offerings so there are burnt offerings there are grain offerings peace offering fellowship offering sin offering guilt offering so you can imagine you know if uh, we were thinking that uh, being a priest is a very cool job uh, you know you just go and you have nothing to do uh, sorry from the the way the practices of the tabernacle are described uh, it's quite busy <laughs> their schedule is so tight they and they have to do it methodically time to time and uh, keep up keep up that uh, rhythm okay so uh, they were doing all this work but in a in a broader sense they had a responsibility to minister to god so whatever god wanted them to do they had to do that uh, and they had a responsibility to minister to people so uh, the offering sacrifices related to people so that also they needed to do so that's what we observe here um so broadly like i've kind of you know described that uh, passage for us in verse 7 it says in the second part the high priest went alone once a year not without blood which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance so this is talking about the day of atonement so the holy of holies where the high priest would go but notice um one is he's taking blood but that blood its significance that blood has to firstly make atonement for the priest himself and why is that because he is also a human being and he is also um, tainted by sin and so he needs purification himself and he's offering the blood for the sake of the people whom he represents so that is about the earthly priest high priest verse 8 the holy spirit indicating this that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing so uh, while you know these practices were going on um they knew something about how god how we should approach god you know, how um 
divine worship is possible, but they did not have the full idea. It's only when Jesus came that everything fell into perspective, that these were but a shadow. And we've used that term earlier. The, these were uh, uh, showing us or pointing us towards the fulfillment of all things which was going to happen through Christ Jesus. So while, even though these things were going on, uh, it was not yet very clear you know, what, how exactly uh, this is going to be fulfilled. But it's only after Jesus came and, you know, he, he um, uh, redeemed us that we were very, um, we were very clear on, you know, who is it is who would ensure that uh, we now have a proper entrance into God's presence and, and can worship freely before our God. In verses 9 and 10, uh, it continues to state about, you know, the symbolism that comes out of these practices. It says it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience, concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. So, these are symbolic and because they were symbolic there is an implication that it's not doing the work fully just think about it if a priest made an offering with uh, let's say uh, or a sacrifice with blood for his own sins if it was perfect uh, there should not have been a need to make another sacrifice it should have just stopped but because what they were doing was not perfect, okay? So we, we saw how a priest himself had to cleanse his, his own uh, life from any kind of sin. But whatever sacrifice he made, it was not able to clear his conscience fully. Like, yes, it is dealing with the sin for that moment. But he has to go back and do it again. Okay, So a lot of rituals were there and they were not perfect, which is why they had to be repeated again and again and again. So at least for himself also, he has to repeat it again and again and again. And they were living in the shadow that way. Perfection was not there. Okay, And there was no option. They had to wait for perfection, but while they were waiting for perfection, in order to continue approaching God and ministering to God, ministering to people, repetition, rituals, foods, drinks, washings, uh, ordinances, until the time of reformation. What is this until the time of reformation? Obviously, we understand till Jesus came, till Jesus fulfilled the work of redemption, and then Obviously, you know, we'll uh, also talk about it. When Jesus came and did it, it was perfect. When perfection comes, there's no need to repeat these rituals. That's the point. But unfortunately, in the case of what is known as the shadow, there's a lot of repetition day to day. You have to keep going with all the sacrifices, all the offerings. Okay. Now let's read from verse 11 and 12. So 11 and 12, please. Anyone? Verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this cre creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, you know, it's talking about perfection now. So far we talked about things that are uh, a picture of perfection. So I, I was just reminded uh, when... Uh, you know, one of my nieces, she's very tiny. Uh, her uh, Someone she knew got her a toy laptop. And she was so excited about it. It was this tiny uh, laptop. 
uh, pink in color, just making some noises. Like if you click, then some images will change. And you know, and she was so excited. I have a laptop, you know, and uh, so whenever I would look at it, I'd be like what a joke <laughs> it, it's so tiny and it can hardly do anything if you if you consider a real laptop and the stuff that people do you know on a real laptop and a real computer people are uh, working on you know programs for nasa and ai and robotics and crazy things are happening on the real thing but uh, comparing it to something so little and uh, the excitement of the child over that small thing. I mean, it's precious, of course. But the point that, that I'm trying to make is it's but a shadow. It's pointing us to the bigger, better, upgraded, um, you know, perfect, perfect um, thing or option that God has for us. So in a, in a manner, it's like that. You know the temple practice. Yes, they are valuable. Okay, they they're very very valuable, so precious, and that's how God ministered to His people uh, through the time of the old covenant. But there was that time when Jesus came, and perfection came, and it's really uh, you know tough to compare uh, how how much greater the real deal is compared to the shadows that existed and in these two verses you know uh, they talk the writer is talking about christ the real high priest remember we saw so many features of this real high priest he is the high priest in the true tabernacle he's a high priest forever high priest in the order of melchizedek okay very very powerful a high priest who did not have to make any sacrifices for himself such a mighty high priest when christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle talking about heaven the real tabernacle. Everything else is but a shadow of the real tabernacle. And this tabernacle is not made with hands. Okay, The heavens, they're not made with, with hands. They're created by God. And they are so, it, it's majestic to say the least. May, we may not even have the words to describe the majesty and the glory of the real tabernacle where uh, God himself dwells and you know worship uh, takes place uh, and and the beauty of that worship it's amazing you know when we go to the book of revelation and we read about the things that are un unfolding we are in awe of the real tabernacle and Jesus is the high priest of that tabernacle that's perfection it's perfection. And verse 12, he says, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. So notice in the earlier verses, we talked about priests who had to offer the blood firstly for themselves. But think about Jesus. He didn't have to do any of that. He was already perfect, already perfect. And uh, the priests went in with the blood of what? Animals, goats, and calves. But we see that that was not perfection because the blood had to uh, keep being shed. If it was perfect, then what is the need for new blood to be shed every day? But that was the status in the shadow. Uh, in the case of the real tabernacle and Christ our great high priest he went in with his own blood it says there's I don't know how many levels above we can't we can't fathom it's beyond our understanding but what God did was he just gave a, a glimpse a tiny glimpse uh, a small picture the blood of goats and the blood of calves it was just pointing to a, a greater level of perfection, which is to come in himself and his blood. So in the real tabernacle, how did Jesus enter? He entered, it says, with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, 
having obtained eternal redemption. So this was possible after what Jesus did on the cross. So till Jesus did it, did uh, sacrificed himself on the cross, this was not possible, isn't it? So somebody had to pay the price. Somebody had to shed blood. Somebody had to make propitiation for the sins of mankind. So when that was done, you know, when Jesus said, it is finished, it is finished, the implication is huge. It's not just that, okay, uh, my sins are forgiven and, you know, I become a child of God now. There are so many things in Christ Jesus. We can talk when we say we are redeemed. You know, the, we can write books on it. So much has happened when we say we are redeemed. We are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. As sons and daughters in the kingdom of light, you know, we have rights, we have authority, uh, we have freedom, we have privileges, uh, right? So incredible, incredible change has taken place through, uh, you know, that, that change in our position of just being redeemed. I'm talking only about one thing, but the impact is huge. What has happened in heaven? The Lord Jesus, he, the real pre high priest has gone back to his uh, real office, if you want to call it, the real tabernacle not made with hands, where true worship, uh, heavenly worship is taking place. He's walked in with his own blood. That blood speaks of a million things, you know, that, that blood that has made the entryway into the presence of God. It has sealed the covenant. It talks about, uh, you know, our forgiveness. So, so much has taken place, okay, by that sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. But we had to wait up until then. Until then, whatever we are talking about, it's not possible, right? Uh, the temple practices had to keep going because there was no other option. There was no other option. If we have to approach a holy God, there has to be forgiveness of sins. And so they were, you know, it's sort of like make do with the blood of goats, lamb, goats and calves and all that. So the practices were repeated, but perfection came after the work that Jesus did. So he did the work and he entered the real tabernacle with his own blood, it says. Okay, that's perfect blood, the most holy place once for all. So perfection sealed it all. There's no need to repeat. Now people may ask the question, why aren't we practicing? We are talking about God and um, you know uh, the presence of God, the holy of holies. Why aren't we practicing as Christians all of these temple rituals? There's no need. We just saw in verse 12, it says, he entered the most holy place once for all. Finished. Finished. Why should we, when you have the real deal, why do you want to go back to the toy? Uh, you know, I, just for our understanding, I'm saying, I'm not minimizing the sacrifices of the temple, but it's sort of like that. When you have the real deal, why to go back to something which is maybe way below? And we are terming it as shadow. So as believers, uh, of course, we'll study when we study the book of Peter that there are uh, spiritual sacrifices now. It's not the rituals anymore, but we have spiritual sacrifices that we can make, not so that we can be accepted by God. That is already done. But we do it as people who are in Christ. Jesus. What are those sacrifices? We'll talk about it. It's our worship, right? The sacrifice of our lips. We worship God. We we pray. We give. Uh, okay. So all these become our spiritual sacrifices that God takes notice of. So things have shifted after Jesus did it once for all. And, uh, you know, we become partakers of the spiritual way of doing things and not so much the ritualistic earthly way of doing things. Okay. Now, uh, any any thoughts, any questions? I'll also come to our chat. I think uh, Jeffina has asked a question about the tabernacle of Moses. So, I mean, I haven't really looked much into it, Jeffina. We, we know 
she's asking is it still there just wondering so we know that the tabernacle was uh, tabernacle of moses was uh, a tent of meeting because those people were always moving so obviously i don't think it was stationary in one place wherever they went it was makeshift they would sort of go pitch it and then worship uh, then what happened is the temple the building of the temple took place right so it went from tabernacle the worship shifted to the temple so we can only refer to the temple now the existing temple that that we see uh, where yeah worship would have been reinstituted similar to the tabernacle uh, any any other question or any thoughts about it so tabernacle of moses we cannot locate it it was a moving tabernacle uh, i have one more question yes verse 9 it says uh, i just want a little more explanation on this in verse 9 it was symbolic for the present time then it says gifts we we understand what sacrifices says about then it says gifts are being offered uh, so it says the present time and then it says gifts and sacrifice i'm just quite confused what the words actually talks about yeah okay so as far as the present time is concerned it's talking about the time till before jesus redeemed us so that's the present time when the priests were offering up their sacrifices now what what are the gifts you want to know what are the gifts of the temple which were offered in the temple yeah so the gifts i think if we just do a study i i had enlisted some sacrifices but i didn't really study the gifts i'm sure we can we can um find some names of what gifts people offered for various situations so yeah so i think that that will need some study but symbolic for the present time simply means jesus has not yet come and died on the cross so in that time the shadow continues and that's the present time okay okay so i uh, you know the book of hebrews is so amazing it's facets of jesus from the beginning till the end just when you thought oh wow he's all this as deity suddenly you you see how he's sharing in our humanity and then you're going wow you know this is how he shared in our humanity uh, and he died on our behalf he became our brethren and just while you're celebrating it you realize oh he's a greater leader than moses he's greater than joshua he's offering a greater rest and you know the journey just keeps continuing continuing um because the the writer is speaking to the uh the hebrew believers and i'm sure his hope was that they'll understand how great you know this this blessing uh, or, or this faith is that they've walked into that you just can't contain it there is so much in it and just for the sake of a, a discouragement that they're going through to let go of this wonderful faith would be such a big mistake and you know he talks about that right in uh, chapter 5 he says i wish you were all teachers i wish you uh, you know you uh, go on to maturity uh, and, and uh, then he says uh, he talks about the the children of israel how they they did not walk into the uh, rest of god and he slowly comes to that subject of falling away and, and how when we when we have a heart of unbelief we run the risk of falling away and then you just keep observing you just keep observing he starts talking about uh, the priesthood of jesus okay and an amazing priesthood where we learn so much about how god chose him 
how god appointed him though he may not be from the uh, the tribe of juda he's from another unique uh, lineage so to speak and so we we study all about you know melchizedek and, and all that the high priest forever he can never be changed just while you're celebrating it and you're thinking oh wow jesus is the high priest hebrews 9 is talking about jesus our sacrifice okay he is the perfect sacrifice and it just doesn't stop so we'll we'll celebrate the fact that he finally came and became that perfect sacrifice that every other ritualistic sacrifice had to just stop there's no need for it right and uh, we will pick up in the next class about his shed blood so when we are saying sacrifice there's the shedding of the blood right the shedding of the blood we've talked about the new covenant but we'll talk about the blood of jesus and the power of the blood of jesus because he is that perfect lamb of god and that's the part that we are going to celebrate in the next class so yeah it's never ending you're just going to be amazed by who jesus is and the the work that he has done right and the revelation of um, that amazing work that has become the fulfillment of all things uh, you know which were part of the tabernacle so let's just close with prayer and i want to request uh, somebody from the class to pray please let's pray dear god in heaven we thank you for this session that we had thank you for the privilege to learn your word and to know that we have a great high priest jesus christ who is our perfect sacrifice our lord and savior we thank you jesus for paying the price by shedding your own blood and you made a way for us to boldly come to the father thank you jesus for your blood has made a way for our redemption help us to stand strong with this revelation and walk a victorious life to bring glory to your name thank you lord we also bless pastor nancy with fill her with more grace and may the spirit of revelation rest upon her as she teaches us this word use her mightily and keep her in good health thank you lord for hearing our prayers in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. 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 Thank you, Rosalind. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, God bless you. May the truth of this book of Hebrews uh, bless our hearts and uh, help us worship the Lord stronger and deeper. Okay. So bye for now, and uh, we'll connect tomorrow in our session. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.